this planting is the one that we've been waiting for. We thought about changing all this landscape from agriculture to prairie. And with this planting, we will have done what we set out to do. So these are the last acres of the 8,000 acres that we set out to plant years ago. This is a big milestone for us, for sure. Imagine any uh, corn field or soybean field you can picture in the state of Indiana, and this was it. And essentially, from a biodiversity standpoint, nothing was here. You look at this, and a lot of good botanists will come in here and say, well, this must have been native prairie, and yeah. say, no, we planted it's it. It's a high compliment. Yeah, it is. This is better than what I ever thought, to be honest, uh, we can do 25 years ago. The Ephraimson Restoration at Kanky Sands is a large mosaic of prairie, wetland, and savanna habitat, totaling at 8,400 acres. And it's really unique, not just to Northwest Indiana, but really to the Midwest. Prairies at this kind of scale just don't happen in many places. I started doing macro photography five, six years ago when a friend gave me a camera. You use a special lens to get very close to subjects and you can kind of zoom in and take pictures of very, very small things and bring them to life in a way that you naked eye wouldn't see. You think you have to travel the world to find unknown species, but there's so many in your backyard, in your county, that you just walk right by. Without getting behind the camera, you can't really show those details. So it's a good storytelling medium for the restoration. Very few people realize that right here in the Midwest is possibly the most endangered ecosystem on the planet, and that's the tall grass prairie. 99.9% .9 of it's been plowed under. There's a tenth of a percent left on the landscape. There's one coming your way over here. Right there. Hard to see those spots when they're moving so fast. Here's one right there. Fragmentation of habitat really affects a lot of different species. And here at Kanky Sands, you know, we have the regal fritillated butterfly as a great example of that. As the prairie has declined, so has the regal. You know, in many states it's gone and hasn't been seen in decades. Here in Indiana, its stronghold is here in Newton County at the Kenke Sands macro site. We're providing thousands of acres now so that butterfly can then expand out again and reunite with other habitats and hopefully become more resilient in the future so that it can persist here in Indiana for a really long time. Conservation is opportunistic. All of a sudden, we had the ability to buy 8,000 contiguous acres of land that exactly stitched together these different key conservation areas that already existed. This was an opportunity that never again was going to be available in Indiana for sure. That land would get divided, it would just continue in row crops, and we never would have had a chance to do it. The conservation science led us to the answer that we have to do this. You've got to fly by the seat of your pants a little in conservation. you got to step out on a limb, take action now. In one fell swoop, we were able to buy most of the land required to restore that connection. That functionality, reconnecting, is really what drove every aspect of this restoration. We've rebuilt a bit of the canvas to conserve some species that are barely hanging on in Indiana, or could we bring some of the species back? Liz is gonna count the red-winged blackbirds and then I will take note of everything else. And ready when you are. Bison were brought to Kanky Sands in 2016. You know, that wasn't part of the original plan of the prairie, but it makes a lot of sense. Bison are known from Indiana. There's a bison on the state seal. They belong here. We have the appropriate habitat. We have the scale needed to support bison. And that's an important milestone. 
Basically, this survey is used to see how the bison as grazers on the prairie are influencing grassland birds. We do this to just really compare, you know, the different species and abundance of these grassland birds that we're seeing in grazed areas where the bison are versus areas that don't see any grazing. If we think about a prairie ecosystem, it is something that is disturbed. That would have historically been herds of thousands to millions of bison. Bison are a keystone species, and that is something that has always been here as part of the prairies and really contributes to the function of what a prairie ecosystem does. We need nature to kind of help nature. So getting bison back on the landscape really unlocked a lot of things that we as managers just can't replicate in our daily stewardship to keep moving the prairie forward. In terms of the management going forward, what will we be doing? So a lot of fire, of course, will uh, happen. But then, you know, that's what the bison are all about at this site, is that is doing our management for us. All the parts are here. You know, we wanted to put every part back on the ground. What it is today isn't going to be what it is 25 years from now or 50 years. It's going to be the people who are coming after us who will further transform this and grow it from what it is today into what it's going to be next. The people, the commitment, the vision, the foresight, the application of science, all these things come together so that the sky is the limit. You know, 25 years ago, before Kinky Sands started as a project, most of this area was row crop agriculture. That process of going from a blank slate and building it up to this habitat that now harbors so many species that would not have been here had this prairie not been built. I think that's powerful and it's really exciting to be a part of.